Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be checking out One Finger Solos, which might be the most unexpectedly cool and productive lesson about scales that you've ever done. It is a super powerful little tool. Now, if you're doing my Major Scale Maestro course, this will be the start of Unit 2. Make sure that you have practiced Pattern 1 of the Major Scale in the key of G and C, and you're super confident with the pattern and had a bit of a go at improvising with it, because you want that before you start this one, okay? So why one finger solos when we've got four that we can use and we've already been practicing the scales? It's a really good, valid question. I'm really glad you asked, but I've got some great answers for you and I'm hoping that I can convince you to add this into your practice routine. So the first reason and probably the most important is that it will break your fingers out of playing patterns that they're used to playing. We want your ear and your musical imagination to be the master here, not your fingers. When we practice playing scales up and down a lot, that it becomes this muscle memory. Your fingers kind of want to go there to play the scale up and down. In some ways, that can be a pretty useful thing. Like when you develop a sense of where the scale notes are under your fingers and you hear an idea, you your fingers will kind of naturally go to the right place. And that's cool. But what you'll also find is that your fingers get kind of stuck in doing that. And it takes some practice doing other exercises like this one finger thing, like playing scales intervallically, something we're going to look at later in the course. Those tools will help your fingers break free of the constraints of muscle memory. So muscle memory is a good thing in some ways, but it can be really bad for the inspirational, the the uh, music making part of using scales because that's a, scales are just a tool that we can use to make music it's not music in itself playing scales up and down no one ever goes to watch a great scale player right you don't see the best scale player in the world at the albert hall that's it's people who make music and whatever style of music they like they're going to be using scales in one way or another they're just a tool Okay, so learning with one finger will help you not play scales in a scaly kind of way. Another great thing that happens when you play with one finger is that it forces you to memorize the scale in a different way in your musical imagination. So it's okay to think of this finger pattern that I, you know, I talked about it. I encouraged it in the last lesson. This two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two, four, little pattern, finger pattern that will help you memorize the scale. And that's good. But when you play with one finger, you learn the same kind of geometric shape, the same pattern, but in a new way. And it really strengthens the, the shape of the pattern in your musical imagination. It'll help you develop the intervallic relationships within the pattern in your mind and the sounds that that pattern makes. Now, that might seem a little bit far-fetched right now, but the further along we get down the course, you'll see how that kind of links up. But it's, the one finger solos is a big part of that process. Another great reason to practice improvising with just one finger is that you're likely to play less you'll end up sounding more melodic. You'll have nicer phrasing. You'll think about your note choices that little bit more because you won't be inclined to just run into that scale passage. You know, that we, we don't want to be doing that all the time. You want to be thinking of like a melody, thinking about stopping on the note, listening to what you're doing, particularly when we tie it in with the lesson that we're doing next, which is all about reactive listening. When we pair these two things together, it'll really help you create melodic solos, make music out of the scales, and to break you out of that just always doing scale runs all the time and the little flurries that our fingers fall under. Like it's, it's very easy to fall into these kind of fast finger patterns that we all like doing. We're, everyone's got them. We won't completely stop it, but it'll help you remove some of that from your playing and just really think much more melodically about what it is that you're doing. Now, I'm hoping I've convinced you already, but one other really interesting thing that happens when you play with one finger is that it's just as easy to play vertically. In fact, that maybe it's even a little easier to play vertically than it is horizontally. Like if you're playing like this regularly, if you were there with your little finger, you're not so likely to jump there with the little finger going from the third string to the second string. It's just a little bit awkward. But when you're thinking with one finger here, particularly the first finger, it's a lot easier to jump vertically. Now, horizontally, with one finger, is a little bit more effort. Now, 
That's not to say you'd want to do that all the time because, again, the point is we're trying to let our ears guide the way. But doing this kind of practice will just help you break out of those same finger patterns and relying on the things that are comfortable. And again, really hoping that your ear becomes the master here and you can start trying to connect things, ideas that you have in your musical imagination and trying to express them out the guitar. So I've done a whole lot of talking, but not a lot of playing. Let me give you some examples of this kind of thing. So I've just got a little loop here that I knocked out, just in the key of G, G, D, E minor C, classic kind of pop uh, progression there. So let's start by just playing a little bit of scale. letting my fingers kind of walk around a bit. I am using my ears to control where I'm stopping. In a short bit, it's kind of okay. I get away with that, but I think as soon as I start trying to go with one finger, it's going to get a little bit more interesting, hopefully. feeling that more like as, as soon as I'm doing the one finger thing it's it's lost this kind of scaly shape to it and there's I, I can't exactly understand how it works but there's definitely more of a connection between what I'm hearing in my musical imagination and what my fingers are doing and the communication between the two so my fingers are sometimes leading so I'm trying something with my finger but then my musical imagination is able to kind of grab it and go okay let's develop that let's try doing this thing again and, and experiment with where it goes and it's it's leading the charge for the melody rather than it just being like scalar now I need to listen back to what I've just done, and I'm really hoping that it kind of comes across that way as well, that it works for you, that it sounds more melodic and more interesting. It definitely felt it, and how I feel when I play is definitely going to be an important part of it. There aren't any more rules than just experimenting with it. Again, I'd recommend that you muck around in the key of G and a little bit in the key of C. Hopefully, those patterns, like where they sit on the fretboard, will be familiar enough for you to get away with this without making mistakes. The not making mistakes in your scale thing still hold really true. So if you start making a lot of mistakes with the one finger thing, then restrict the zone that you're in. So maybe just start with the middle two strings. So where would be first finger, third finger, fourth finger, this little section. Just just use that little bit with one finger for a little bit and see what happens. Remember, when you restrict yourself, you tend to get a lot more out of the thing that you're doing. Right, So you'll find new ways, you'll find different avenues to explore and it'll take you on a different journey. So don't, even if you're confident to do the whole pattern, sometimes restricting yourself can be very beneficial as well. The lessons in this course are in pairs. So there's this lesson about one finger solos and we're also going to be looking at reactive listening and I'll explain the specific practice routine for this unit at the end of the next lesson. But if you happen to have just stumbled upon this video on YouTube, just try some one finger solos, grab a backing track in a key that you like and have a go at using one finger. I promise you it'll make a big difference. It's maybe not immediate, right? So I'm not saying like, try this one time and you'll suddenly be playing more melodically. You've got to train yourself. It's going to take some practice. I would say for most people, it'll maybe be two or three weeks 
five minutes a day, so like one five-minute backing track once a day for a you know, few weeks, you should start noticing a, a deeper connection between your musical imagination and your hand. And hopefully you'll find yourself making music out of scales instead of just playing them up and down because that's really of limited use. It's useful, but it's not... It's not making music. And making music is what I really, really want you to get out of this course. So look, I really hope you enjoy this and I'll see you for the reactive listening session shortly. Bye-bye.